Hello, HCC Eagles. I am Ashley Rhodes Watkins. I am the Student Life Coordinator for the Northeast College, and I would like to welcome you to our virtual celebration of Juneteenth HCC style. Um, we are so happy that you are here with us today. I just want to go over a few things with you before we get started with our wonderful special guest that we have here today to talk to you about Juneteenth. Um, we are going to be dropping some questions. Our presenter is going to be giving some questions out after her presentation. And this is a chance for you HCC Eagles, if you are students, to win some e-gift cards. We're giving away three $25 e-gift cards and our presenter is going to be dropping those questions right after her presentation. How it's going to work is that the first person to answer the question, drop it in the chat and that first person to answer will get the e-gift card and I'll show you how to get that. I'll send you a private message on how you can claim that e-gift gift card if you are the winner. So without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Ms. Sharday Campbell, who is going to introduce our guest speaker for our virtual Juneteenth event. Sharday, it is on you. Hello, thank you so much, Ashley, and to all of Student Life, and welcome to uh, our first event for the Juneteenth lineup of Student Life events. I know Ashley at the end of this presentation is going to share um, the other events that are lined up for this week across the city. It's outdoors, safe, free food. It's gonna be music. So you stay tuned for update on those or check your email because the email went out yesterday. And so we're excited to have you here. I think the, you know, the intention of the Juneteenth events was deeply rooted in making sure we had engagement but also that we had that historical context that you walk away knowing more about Juneteenth than you did when you came in. So as introduced, I always forget to do this. I'm Sharday Campbell. I am the Enrollment Communications Manager here at HCC. And I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our speaker today. Um, you may notice a resemblance. Um, legend has it that she stole my face. She's my mom. And it is my pleasure to introduce her today. So I will read her bio and all of her accolades because <laughs> it's required. I mean, she's my mom. You hear her giggling in the background. So Tammy Lane Campbell is a revered activist who made a quantum leap from rural Mississippi to become a nationally recognized civil rights leader and founder of the Honey Brown Hope Foundation. Many Texans know Tammy Lane Campbell from a variety of perspectives. Founder and Executive Director of the Honey Brown Hope Foundation, an activist who acts, author, speaker, and simply is Mama Campbell. In a climate where the marginalized are left feeling hopeless by the bitterness of social and environmental injustices, her organization offers programming, resources, and support that align with this cause's diversity appreciation, environmental stewardships, and stewardship and civil rights. Founded in 1991, our organization is a nationally recognized, award-winning nonprofit that plants seeds of, seeds of hope from the schoolhouse to the courthouse and the jailhouse. With nearly three decades of service to the community, she has locally and nationally addressed the school to prison pipeline disproportionately affecting black and brown students. For those who do not know, they build prisons based on how many third graders fail. Literacy is a predictor of incarceration, and there is a direct correlation between that and disciplinary policies at the K through 12 level. So she addresses that. She advocates for policy reform. Create, she's created and distributed over 200,000 calendars to promote environmental stewardship, because if we are promoting taking care of our communities, it also includes our environments. And she's also hosted history talks that have show, uh, shared the untold history of the civil rights era with over 5,000 youth and their families. She's a sought after mediator, speaker, and commentator who's been uh, featured in countless media outlet, outlets. And as a natural extension of her work, she's most notably served on Harvard University School to Prison Pipeline, Roundtable, um, initiative. She was the first female president of the NAACP Missouri City and Vicinity Branch. She served as the education's chair of the Texas State NAACP Conference. She is a graduate and senior fellow of the American Leadership Forum. 
Um, and also she served on the Fort Bend District Attorney Brian, Mills, Brian Middleton's Criminal Justice Committee. He is the first black district attorney out in Fort Bend. And she also served on the transition committee for Harris County DA. She's a recipient of countless awards. The Edna Insurance Magic Johnson, KPRC, KPRC Local 2 Jefferson, Top 25 Women of Houston, the Houston Sun Women Power of Purpose, the Key to the City in Jasper, Texas, North Houston Frontiers Drum Major Award, the NAACP Image Award for Community Service. And she's also featured, she was featured in Sophisticates Black Hair as a role model beyond beauty. All of those accolades and she considers her children her greatest blessing. So give a resounding virtual applause, get some energy in your hands, drop some in the chat, introducing this song, welcoming to others, Miss Tammy Lane Campbell. Okay. <laughs> wow, I tell you, she always gets me worked up when she does that kind of introduction. Thank you, Sharnay. How far to freedom? Are we there yet? I'm blessed and highly favored to be with such a wonderful group of people today, including my baby girl, Sade, an incredible student life staff, Ashley, Dominique, Regina, Jaina, Carl, and Amado. Amado. And HCC students, <laughs> thank you for allowing me to join you today in celebration of the 156th annual Juneteenth holiday. During this Juneteenth program titled, How Far to Freedom? Are we there yet? I will serve as your tour guide on this historical journey, examining whether African-Americans have reached the destination, real freedom and equality. Please stay strapped in your seat belts during this virtual journey because some uncomfortable truths will be exposed about how America mistreated its own black citizens during slavery and how our historical baggage and its modern day challenges are intertangled. As we celebrate Juneteenth, let's remember all those who came before us and how they fought and died for the freedom we enjoy today and how we must move the freedom agenda forward for future generations. Now, from 1619 to 1865, where my ancestors, Africans, were captured and sold at auctions like animals forced into slavery, brutalized, beaten, humiliated, raped, dehumanized, hung, lynched, and subjected to the indignity of being stripped of their names and heritage. Hmm. Can you imagine the human tragedy of being kidnapped, sold by your own people into slavery. Can you imagine being tortured? Financial and hate. Can you imagine making a journey in change? Change, forced to lie in your own waste, 
doing a journey from Africa to America. This transatlantic journey of the early 16th century lasted several months. But by the 19, by the 19th century, the crossing was about six weeks. Caution now. This emotional and horrifying journey is filled with hopelessness, despair, and revelations. Virtual passengers, what you are about to see and hear will be unsettling. Look out of your virtual windows. There is a place where tortured, mangled, beaten, hung, and murdered black bodies lie. Up ahead, we'll be passing an auction block. As we pass, you will hear ghostly sounds. Some say the sound never ceases and that it comes from mothers and children moaning, crying, and screaming because they are being separated from each other. Reportedly, back in 1776, the American dream for some white males was to be slave owners. In the Declaration of Independence, Thomas Jefferson noted, people have been endowed by their creator with certain fundamental and inherited rights. These include, but are certainly not limited to the rights to liberty and the pursuit of happiness. But these rights defined in our founding fathers, defined by our founding fathers, did not refer to the 90% of Black Americans who were enslaved. While the Constitution is rooted in the principles of freedom and liberty, it actually promotes slavery because it did not include Blacks as full humans and citizens. Disturbingly, Thomas Jefferson, author of the Declaration of Independence and our third president of the United States, secretly fathered children with his teen slave, Sally Hemings. The president started sexually assaulting Sally when she was a teen. Now she wasn't of the legal of, of legal age to consent or to say no to her master, the president. Unfortunately, Thomas Jefferson did not regard his biracial children that he fathered with uh, him in as uh, equally created. <laughs> now that we are here, this liberty and justice we must address in pursuit of happiness. It took the Civil War victory over the South for him to free his own children. Even after the Emancipation Proclamation, he never freed Sally Hemings. American history books proclaim that the Civil War was America's bloodiest war ever. I found no evidence to contradict this claim. However, during my research, I did uncover some unsettling truths about President Abraham Lincoln, AKA known as Honest <laughs> Abe. To uh, create a white America on August 14, 1864, President Lincoln 
1862, sorry, President Lincoln invited a delegation to of our prominent black leaders to manipulate them. Yes, you heard me right. Manipulate them into leaving the U.S. to move to Haiti. When Dr. D Frederick Dulles heard about this meeting, he denounced President Lincoln's attempt to create a white USA and asked, why should Blacks leave the country where we were born? contributed to and had just as much a right to live in our country as any other American. Sorry, I kind of got off course there. Back to our journey. Where were we? Oh, I remember now. I was sharing how my black ancestors got free. In 1863, during the second year of the Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation that declared only persons held as slaves in the rebellious states free. Now, although the 1863 Proclamation Emancipation did not free all slaves, it did advance the Union Army with more soldiers. Due in part to Frederick Dulles' tireless recruiting efforts, almost 200,000 black soldiers joined uh, formerly slaves, enlisted in the armed forces to help the Union Army win victory in the Civil War. When President Lincoln and the uh, War Department ignored how blacks, how black prisoners of war were being assassinated in cold blood by Confederate troops. Hey, Dulles paid Lincoln an unannounced visit and told the president. Now he didn't have an appointment. He just ride in on a uh, ride in on him and and, and, and waited for that meeting with them unannounced. Now, he told them that in good faith, I cannot continue to recruit black men when the president and war department allowed them to be tortured, assassinated with no repercussions from them. I can't do it, Mr. President. Now we have Harriet Tubman. She joined the Union Army as a nurse, cook, and spy. Now many may know her because she was the Black Moses that freed over 300 enslaved people, including her family members. I tell you, she was something. Slaves made up about 19% of the American population from 1790 to 1810. Now it dropped 14% by 1880. In that period, the number of slaves drew from 700,000 to about um, 4 million. As we continue, Don't forget the real truth about the Civil War. It was not about freeing slaves. The North was not outraged by slavery. They didn't take a moral stand against it. The Civil War was fundamentally a conflict over wealth and the South gaining more influence and wealth over the North because of their free enslaved labor force. That's right. It was a green thing, not a black thing or more. <laughs> and here are some other facts that was omitted 
from the history book. President Abraham Lincoln didn't intend to free all slaves on January the 1st, 18, 1863. Initially, now, his whole thought was to <laughs> have free slaves sent back to Africa, uh, to Haiti. <laughs> These facts may be alarming, but they're true. President Lincoln advocated for a government purchase emancipation that would have gradually freed slaves into the year 1900. This would have uh, extended slavery for another 37 years, shockingly. Lincoln used federal funds to remove 5,000, yes, 5,000 free black men, women, and children from the United States to a small island of the, uh, off the coast of Haiti. Lincoln initially, initial goal was to free slaves and to send them all back to Africa. The Civil War didn't end in 1863. It wasn't over until 1865 when the last slave in the United States who resided in Texas was freed. Although the Emancipation Proclamation was more in name than in fact, now it paved the way for, uh, for Congress to pass the 13th Amendment that outlawed slavery in the United States, the 14th Amendment that defined the rights of citizens and guaranteed equal protection under the law, and the 15th Amendment that prohibited discrimination or, uh, in the right to vote on the basis of race. Now, these amendments, <laughs> were forced upon the defeated South as a condition for them to unite in the Union. In Galveston, when Gordon Granger declared the end of slavery, the reaction to this profound news ranged from pure shock to immediate jubilation. We are now approaching Galveston on this virtual journey. Can you see free blacks rejoicing, Modern dancing, designed for a the luxury. answering their freedom prayers? You can also see fear and panic upon their faces as they contemplate. Where will they go? Where will they, what will they eat? How will they survive? Look over there. You can see former masters threatening and abusing former slaves as they took their freedom walk from the plantation. If you listen closely, you can hear them shouting Free at last! Free at last! Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Up ahead in Houston, Reverend Jack Yates and other newly freed Blacks raised a thousand dollars to purchase 10 acres of land in 1872. It is now called the Emancipation Park, located in uh, Houston. And it was formerly, the uh, name of the street was Dowling. Now, they purchased the land to provide a safe and friendly place for Blacks to celebrate Juneteenth without being harassed. Later, this park became the first public park in the state. 
HCC district and Century campus is one and a half miles from Emancipation Park. Unfortunately, after 246 years enslaved, African-Americans were not really free. Even today, we are still living the legacies of slavery and Jim Crow. Long after both systems were formally abolished through enormous damage and loss, both tangible and intangible, the fact that our Constitution still does not guarantee the right to vote for all in the year of our Lord 2021 is an example of why we still have a way to go to get to the full equality and freedom. Sorry, I just got a little off track again, but I'm getting us back online and on course. Free at last, free at last, Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Although we have covered many miles, we have not arrived to our final equity destination. I'm so pleased to see so many faces of diverse backgrounds and ethnicities on this Juneteenth journey today. However, we must exit this train. However, we mustn't exit this train or disrupt history. Now we're about to enter the post slavery journey, the Jim Crow era. This took, this too is a long, great sorrow in despair, not only for my people, but for all Americans who have not benefited from the diverse resource, not fully, of our country. These dehumanizing laws existed for about 100 years from the post-Civil War era as early as 1865 until 1965 where uh, they were overturned by the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which African-Americans along with their fellow Americans protested, fought, and some were killed for attempting to get it passed. These systemic laws were used to deny African-Americans the right to vote, fair housing, healthcare, jobs, and in education. They were used to deny Blacks from public restrooms, water fountains, and other simple opportunities like going to a hotel or restaurant of their choice. Those who attempted to defy Jim Crow laws often faced arrest, fines, jail sentences, violence, and death. If you look now to your left, you will see a sign that reads, no end, no ends allowed. We're about to travel into treacherous territory over rivers during this journey. The next river that we will cross over is Tallahatchie River 
where a young teenage boy named Emmett Till, hmm, black body was plucked from the Tallahatchie River in Mississippi. He was brutalized, mutilated, and killed in 1955 after a white woman accused him of whistling at her. Over there is a sign marking the area where Emmett Till's mutilated body was pulled from the Tallahatchie River. If you look closely, you can see that it's riddled with bullets. To avoid being killed while traveling, my people, Black people, used a special published book called The Green Book that directed them which places were safe to stop for lodging, eating, going to the restroom, and even to get gas. Back then, around our country, Black people were being killed and discarded like trash. We Black and white citizens protested and struggled to make change. But this evil and vicious cycle a systemic racism still persists. Persist. It has traveled throughout history. The legacy of enslavement has the society's historical baggage from Jim Crow to mass incarceration and convict leasing we Blacks have been unable to escape the merry-go-round of systemic racism from the police, justice department, and healthcare industry. The legacies of enslavement still hunt us today. That has resulted in our modern day challenges of poverty, literacy, discrimination, racial and economic disparity in education, housing, healthcare, racial injustice, in the police and justice system, voter intimidation, unemployment, and <coughs> underemployment, excuse me. The legacy of enslavement still haunts us. I tell you, there's good news though. We are coming out of the fog. We're coming out of the fog and can see a uh, little clear thanks to our four parents who stood, marched, protest, and fought against discrimination to physically and to physically move our civil rights agenda, make no mistake, this destructive legacy, these destructive legacies are a threat to our nation. With that being said, it's almost time for us to exit this train and catch our connecting train. Before we exit, the question remains, how far to freedom? And are we there yet? The answer is no. We are not there. We have come a long ways, but we are not there to reach our equity destination. We must embody the renewed spirit of freedom. We Americans do not have a moment to waste. Not one moment. We must remain on the battlefield. We must march forward. 
we must continue to protest until we meet, reach our final destination. We must honor our four parents. We must keep up the roads that they have laid with their lives and blood to reach our destination. Many people are flustered about how little has been revealed about the history that has shaped our United States and are demanding a more complete telling. Although I can give you, I can't give you an exact timeline about how far to freedom. I can tell you this, we can't hop off this train until we have reached the final destination of real freedom and equality. We must never give up on the destiny to liberty and justice for all. Now at this time, I want to bring my lovely daughter back in. She has some time for you and we want to see how much you uh, uh, look, have heard doing this destination journey. Thank you, Jade. Oh, Zoe, you're gonna have to wait. All right, all right. Zoe. Thank you, Mama Campbell. She dropped some heavy facts, um, some deep realities. Um, we, I was having online conversations today about how slavery is not the extent or the beginning of Black history, but most of our history as African Americans, because of slavery, is rooted in survival. So what she shared was heavy, but I think it's a call to action to realize we haven't reached the final destination of freedom and equality. And while we can't gloss over history as something that doesn't need to be reflected upon and looked at so that we don't go back to prior destinations and that we don't continue to repeat history. It's Juneteenth is an observation a call to action and should empower all of us to reflect, have those conversations with our children, fill in where history books are not given a full scope of the history. Yes, black people were enslaved, but let's look at the whole history of how they came to be, how we came out of it and what happened after we came out of it. So I want to encourage everyone um, to walk away with that call to action. We are so grateful that you tuned in today for this virtual presentation. It's always easy to go for the engagement, but we'd be so remiss and negligent not to intentionally pause for historical reflections on days like today. So, so grateful to have you here. We have a couple of questions and uh, thanks to uh, our, our, our fam and student life, um, we have $25 Eve gift cards, which have been real popular post pandemic in within the pandemic uh, for students uh, to participate. So first question, which Texas city was the end of slavery announced? All of these questions were covered in her presentation. So first one to drop the answer in the chat. Boom, I'm seeing them come through. Yes. All right, Ms. Clarissa is the is the winner. Clarissa Etzel, you are the winner. I'm going to send you a private message on how you to claim your e-gift card. Yes, Galveston has deep rooted history. Yes, yes, yes. All right, next question. Which HCC campuses are closest to the land purchased by John Jack Yates and other free slaves for Emancipation Park? that provided the first safe and friendly environment for Blacks to celebrate Juneteenth. Yep, 
I'm, I'm seeing the right answer. All right. I'm, the first person to get it was uh, Chica Odili. Sorry, I'm mispronouncing your name. Please charge it to my head and not my heart. So Chica Odili, I'm going to send you a message, private message on how you'll be able to claim your $25 e-gift card. And that that is Central Campus, if people didn't know. Okay. <laughs> And last question, last chance to get this $25 real quick. I can think about what I can do with $25. So last question, which constitutional amendment outlawed slavery? <laughs> Michael came through quick. <laughs> Ms. Charday, what is Sorry. the correct answer? <laughs> Huh? The correct answer is the 13th Amendment. That went to Caitlin. Caitlin Varghese. Oh, did I see? Oh, did I call the wrong? Uh-uh. I, I think I'm getting direct chats. That may be why. Uh-huh. Caitlin got it. Okay. Boom. Caitlin. Yes, I missed her. Sorry, Caitlin. <laughs> I saw Michael first and I was like, yes, we got our first one. Oh, y'all were really paying attention. <laughs> uh, they are. They are. And you know, the 13th Amendment, I think it's important for us to understand this legislation because it's a call for us to really understand what's going on in legislation now. It outlawed slavery, but there was a loophole, which was highlighted in um, the Netflix documentary by um, the out, out the Netflix documentary 13th. And that and that loophole was in incidents of, 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 of you not being incarcerated, can they not reinstitute slavery? And that's really important because that connection is deeply rooted in what we're looking at in the current present day of mass incarceration and what I shared earlier in my mom's bio about the school to prison pipeline. These things are interconnected, sit with our history, get honest about our history, be intentional about not glossing over it. And so appreciate your participation in the chat, excited about it. This is being recorded and will be posted on HCC Student, Student Life's uh, YouTube channel. And I am going to hand it back to Ashley, who is going to share what else HCC has in store for Juneteenth this week. All right. Yes, we have a few things that are going to be going on, guys, for Juneteenth. This is not just the end of our celebration. This is the beginning today. So I want to let you guys know what we got going on. So on tomorrow, starting Wednesday, June 16th, from 1130 to 130, we will have our North Line celebration with food and a band at the North Line campus in the front patio. For those of you who are attending Central at our South campus, we'll be doing an event on June 16th from 12 to 2. That is the South Campus for Central, our East Side Campus, our Southeast students. It will be at the East Side Campus on Wednesday, June 16th from 12 to 2. So we got a couple of things that are going to be going on on tomorrow. So we got North Line happening tomorrow. We got Central South Campus and we got the Southeast East Side Campus. For Coleman, they're going to be celebrating on Thursday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on the Coleman Campus. For those of you who are at the exact Central Campus, they'll be celebrating from 12 to 2 on Thursday. North Northwest will be 12 to 2 on Thursday. And then on the Stafford and the West Loop campuses, it will be Thursday at the Stafford campus from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then on Thursday in the evening at the West Loop campus from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. And then you guys can also get your official HGC Juneteenth student life shirts. They are going to be free to our first 150 students who attend our events. So I want to thank you guys so much for being here with us today, celebrating Juneteenth with us, and that we will all see you face-to-face, -face, hopefully, this week for the Juneteenth events. I want to give a special thank you to Miss Campbell well, Mama Campbell is what we call her, as well as Sade for coming and bringing a wealth of knowledge to us today. Also, remember, you can check this back out on our YouTube channel for um, HEC Student Life. All right, guys, you guys have a good one. Thanks.